A blessed morning to all. Shall we stand as we receive the body of Harold Grantly Allen? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, a blessed morning to all. This morning we have come to pay our final respects to Grantly Harold, to Harold Grantly Allen, and more importantly, to support those of his family, his relatives and loved ones who are mourning his loss. <clears throat> those who are feeling the pain that no one is really able to understand. But as we go through this service, we ask that God will comfort you that you will feel his presence, you will know his peace, and his strength will continue to be yours as you go through the days and the weeks and the months ahead. To his children, Grantly and Stacia, stepchildren, Rhonda, Sandra, his grandchildren, his great-grands, his siblings, Ernesto, and Lillian, the other relatives and friends, the pastors, the presbytery, and their families, the members of Abundant Life Assembly, extend our deepest condolences to you this morning as you mourn the loss of your loved one and our prayers that god will continue to guide and direct you as you go through the days and the weeks and the months and even the years ahead as you feel the pain of your loss we encourage you to look to jesus the only one who knows exactly how you are feeling and the only one who can and who will give you the peace that you need in this time Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Our Father and God, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts. Even in our time of sorrow, God, we give you thanks, we give you praise. For you are more than worthy, Lord, you are good. And Father, we thank you this morning for the life that you have lent to us. We thank you, God, for the times that he would have spent with his family and with his loved ones. God, for the good times and the not so good times 
the laughter, the tears, the memories that they will have, God, as they, of their loved one, even as they feel the pain of his loss. But God, you have promised that you will comfort those who mourn. You have promised, oh God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so even as they go through this time, we ask that your presence will be with them. Lord, that you will fill them with that peace that passes all understanding. God, you alone know their hearts. You alone know how deep, oh God, their feelings go. How deep the pain is. And Father, we ask that you, oh God, will stand with them as they go through this time of mourning. And you will continue to surround them with your presence, God. You will keep your hand upon them as they go from day to day. Lord, as they face whatever circumstances that will come out of this death. And God, as they remember their loved ones, may they remember the good times. And may those times be a source of encouragement to them. Father, we ask that as we go through these times of mourning, that we will look to our own mortality. For we too will go the way of death one day. So may we make our calling and election sure. God, we ask us as we go through this service, something that is said and done, some word from your word, some word from the songs that we will sing, will help to encourage them and to give them that hope and that assurance that you are with them, you are their peace. And so we commit them into your hands this morning and in the days ahead. We commit this service to you and we ask that whatever is said and done here and as we go to the graveside will be done to bring honor and glory to your name. And so, God, we give you thanks again for all that you are and all that you will continue to be and all that you will do for us, in us, and through us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the first song, The Power of Your Love.
draw me to your side And as I wake I rise up like the eagle And I will soar with you Your spirit leads me on By the power of your love Your love surround me. Bring me near, Lord, draw me to Your side. And as I wait, I rise up like a leaf. power of his love we can stand in any situation even in our times of sorrow his love is our bul bulwark our strength our shield and we look to him this morning for the strength that we need in these times please remain standing for the scripture reading is taken from psalm 27 and will be read by justin robinson A blessed good morning to the church. The scripture reading will be taken from Psalm 27 from the New International Version of the Bible. The scripture reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though a war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of, the, of his tabernacle and set me upon a high rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Here ends the Bible reading. Amen. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. You may be seated at this time as we have the eulogy by Justin Francis.
Good morning, church. Good morning, friends and family and loved ones. It is always a very sad occasion when we have to meet like this at the passing of a loved one. Uncle Harold has been a true friend and family member. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. His eulogy I will read now. Harold Grantley Aline was born on the 9th of September, 1947. To his loving parents, Millicent Irene Aline and Oliver Haynes. Harold was the last of his mother's five children. Consequently, was considered the baby of the family and affectionately nicknamed Boy Boy. His siblings were brothers, Kelvin and Robert, who preceded him, along with his sisters, Ernesta and Lillian, better known as Jean. The family lived in the coastal village of Olive Lodge, St. James, which in those early days were a fishing and agricultural community. He was educated at the St. John the Baptist School a stone's throw from his home, and would occasionally reflect fondly on his time there, often stating that school days are the best days. Harold lost his father, Oliver, whom he adored at the tender age of nine, and this necessitated him having to grow up prematurely to contribute to the economic well-being of his mother and self. He would explore several occupations before finally settling on gardening. Harold was the pilot of a glass bottom boat, which offered seasonal employment and work on farms and factories through the Canadian Farm Labour Program. Angela, Paul and Trevor, his niece and nephews, in recounting the occasions he would return home after working in Canada, indicated that his flight would land at Sewell Airport around 1 a.m. in the morning. Due to their excitement, they would be unable to sleep because they knew he would return with bags of candy, English apples, and other fruits not readily available to Barbadian at the time, and the latest toys or gadgets gadgets. His anticipated arrival would eclipse even Christmas Eve for them as young children. Harold met the love of his life, Evelyn Idora Robinson, in 1970. Dora, as he affectionately called her, was an attractive, shapely young lady, and he fell hardly for her. This relationship would forever change the trajectory of his life. And boy, boy, how to become man, man. This union produced two biological children, Grantley and Stacia, along with two stepchildren, Rhonda and Sandra. As a result, he gave up his seasonal trip to Canada in exchange for a local full-time employment that would give him the opportunity to be a more active participant in the reign of his family. This led him to secure employment at Innisfree, a villa in Sandy Lane in the 1974. As a gardener, he would eventually be promoted to the position of caretaker in 1995. Prior to his position, he would leave his main employer six days a week to travel to properties in the Trevina Garden area to, be part, to part, do part-time work to make additional income to support his family. Boy Boy worked at Innisfield for a grand total of 48 years, retiring officially in April of 2022. During this time at Innisfield, he developed a close bond with the entire Ryan family, 
including Mr. and Mrs. John J. Ryan, all of their children and grandchildren, especially Irene, Julie, and Danny. When he spoke of, in, of his employers, he did so with kindness and respect. It was very evident from his comments that the Ryan family appreciated Harold, the person, and treated him with kindness and respect to the end, to the very end. Even asking that he return after retiring to transport the cook for the villa to and from the supermarket during the period when the Ryan family were on island. This was an effort to ensure that he would remain active and it would also give their family an opportunity to see him. For this, we want to extend our sincere thanks to the Ryan family. Family, relatives, and friends were the center of Harold's world. Outside of working hard to provide financially, he created a nurturing environment for his family to develop and strive. In their format, formative years, his average weekend would involve taking his children to the beach or his son to a cricket game to support his nephews, Anderson, Greg, and Paul, who all played the game with varying level of success. He loved people and developed close friendship with persons such as David and Glendine Britton, Lionel and Darnell Reeves, Rona, Penny, Miss Aline, and Grace. Additionally, he could be overheard on the phone speaking to his sister Ernesta, his niece Angela, and nephew Paul on a regular basis, and it, would, it was obvious that they all had a very close bond. His family at Abundant Life were not to be left out. His sisters in Christ, Sandra and Etta, would call occasionally to share an uplifting word. Harold also had a good relationship with his immediate neighbors, Shelley, Sharice, and Richard, along with Rohan and June, with whom he would share fruits and look out for each other. For him, people were important and he treated persons with kindness and respect. Harold also loved music. Every Sunday, he would play his beloved records, and his favorites were Charlie Pride, Ace Cannon, and Joseph Niles. He always had a radio and eventually would be seen tinkering with it. He was very knowledgeable about the weather. Anything you needed, to know you, you ask him. Late in Harold's development, late in life, Harold developed his culinary skills and became a boss cook. This was out of necessity when his beloved wife, Dora, fell ill in 2010 and was unable to prepare meals for the family. Under Dora's expert guidance, he was transformed from a husband who only knew how to boil water to a boss cook, whose meal the household and extended family would eagerly look forward to. He did not just only focus on taste, but ensured that all meals were con consisted of balanced nutrition. He would often say to his daughter, Stacia, you need to eat your vegetables. His wonderful meals will be missed, not just for the wonderful taste, but for what they represented. Preparing meals for three household, households on a weekly basis demonstrated his love, devo, devo, dedication, and commitment to his family. In November 2020, Harold developed some challenges with his heart, and this progressed to congenitive heart failure and ultimately his passing on December 20, 31st, 2022. During his illness, illness, he never complained. He was also always thankful 
and remained largely independent until the end. Generally, he was not in physical pain and suffered mainly from fatigue. He died quietly at home while listening to the Larry Mayer's radio show. Harold the boy who became a good man will be greatly missed. However, your memories will, be, will live on through your family and relatives and friends. You were not just a man to your family, but a hero. May you rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Amen. Please stand for the singing of the hymn, To God Be the Glory. God be the glory Michael Holford comes to give the sermon. Thank you, Elder Roderick. Good morning to everyone. Once again, I want to extend deepest condolences and sympathy uh, to the family of our dearly departed Harold Aline. The Abundant Life Assembly family will truly miss him. We have constantly over uh, the past few months have kept him up in prayer, have called, have sent different forms of greetings, and we will miss his presence, but we are celebrating the fact that he came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And we believe, we know according to scripture, that he is safe with the Lord. Amen. 
Before you take your seats, I just want to read from the Word of God, reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 to 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 to 5. And it reads in this way, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed father this is your word open our hearts to your word and how you will minister through your word for your honor and glory for these things we give thanks in jesus name amen you may take your seats i will just be a few minutes as i just share an encouragement from the word of god during this time of mourning for us as human beings outside of moments of grief and even inside of moments of grief there is a hope a human hope that that person who we love that person who we cherish will have a good future and more so when those persons pass away from us when they die our hope once again a human hope is that they are in a better place because as human beings we always reach out for comfort we always want a sense of peace and stability in every aspect of our lives and that is why when someone dies, when someone passes away, we gain strength from the comfort that comes when those we love as well come around us, they surround us, and they comfort us. They give us words of condolence. Uh, they give us words of peace. And of course, this is good and this is exemplary of our human relationships. But you see, the reality is that we cannot just have a human hope that all is well. Because our human hoping is really derived from our emotional connection to that individual and may not necessarily be derived from that which is the truth. Because the truth is, and the truth we find comes from the word of God, and it tells us, that the wages of sin is death it tells us as well that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so our hope can go beyond a human hoping towards a godly uh, uh, confidence that those who have found Christ are good are well and I want us to have that similar peace as we reflect on the life of our dearly departed. I am not here this morning trying to convince you not to be sad. I am not here this morning trying to tell you that there is not a season of mourning that you will go through and you must go through because that is part of our human construct. You see, the Bible tells us as well in Ecclesiastes that there is a time to rejoice and there is a time to mourn it tells us that there is a time to be born and there is a time to die so the feelings that you have at this time are absolutely appropriate but I want you to join those feelings with a sense of peace that Harold having placed his faith in Jesus Christ is well with the Lord this is why we look to scripture for our comfort because we believe that these scriptures that the Bible is the very voice of God 
And who else can we believe and who else can we trust but the creator of all things? Can I get an amen? We kind of quiet. Thank you to those two persons. But he is the one we can trust because he is eternal and the word of God tells us, his word tells us that he does not lie. His word tells us that his promises are sure. And therefore, when God says something, it comes to pass. I'm sure we have all experienced people telling us things and they sound good, but they never end up happening. I'm not going to use any examples at this moment, but as I survey this congregation, I'm seeing a couple people smiling because you're remembering somebody who told you something in 2022 and it's now 2023 and it still ain't happened yet. But God is not like man who says things because he wants us to feel good or says things because he is hoping to gain some popularity. When God speaks, it happens and we can be assured of this. So when we look to scripture in the book of Isaiah, we see the prophet Isaiah declaring the coming Messiah and when he declared this Messiah, he didn't come the next day, but he came some centuries later. And we know him to be Jesus the Christ. And here Isaiah in this portion of scripture is giving a description of this Messiah because he wants as history goes on and when the Messiah does turn up, that those who are the witnesses of this Messiah would know that this is him. You see, when, when the, the Israelites, when the Hebrews heard prophetic words about the Messiah, they thought about a political leader. They thought about a military leader. And specifically so at the time where he made his advent, at that time in the history of Israel and at that time in the history of the world, they were hoping that this Messiah would set them free from the Roman one world government. But the type of freedom that this Jesus, that this Messiah was bringing, not just to Israel, but to the world, was a, a, a freedom that was greater than having shackles broken. It was a freedom greater than being set free from prison. It was a spiritual freedom that set humanity free from the curse of sin. So the, the, the prophet Isaiah goes on to describe what this Messiah would come to do. And he says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And when he talks about griefs and sorrows here, he is not specifically focused on the type of grief or sorrow that we might feel today, although he can bear that. He is talking about the type of grief and sorrow that comes from the realization that we are sinners. You see, one of the things that we do as humans is that we try to live our best lives. We try to go along day by day hoping that we are either living good enough or that we have a, 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 a good, good enough situation that we will see a good end. But the reality is because we are separated from God, because we live lives that are opposed to his will, we are in essence sinners and this is not something we go around as we meet people and say hi how are you doing I just want you to know that I'm a sinner even at times we might want to deny it but the truth is even Harold in his state before coming to know Christ we are all sinners and because we are sinners it means that we have a particular reward for our sin Every time I might want to tell myself that I'm not a sinner, I have to ask myself this question. And you can ask yourself this question too. Have you ever lied? And if you say no, that will be your first lie. 
So surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Because when we recognize that we are sinners, there is a sorrow, a holy sorrow that comes over us. It goes on to say, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. In other words, something was going to happen to this Messiah that did not match our idea of what a Messiah or what a hero would look like. I don't know about the time where Isaiah spoke, but I know today when we think of heroes, when we may be watching a movie and, and it's the star boy in the movie, we expect him to beat up all the bad men. We expect him to be more powerful than the evil guys. We expect him to get the least licks and we expect at the end of the movie that he will be alive. But this Messiah did not come to fight in a physical form, but he came to fight in a spiritual form and that spiritual fight required him to give up his life. To sacrifice himself so that we could live. What a glorious Savior. What a loving Lord. So as we come to the end of, 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 of this particular declaration that the prophet Isaiah makes, he says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We've often looked at this scripture, that last line, and by his stripes we are healed, and we have appropriated it to ourselves when we are not well, when we are physically sick, and we say by his stripes we are healed, I will be healed from this cold, I'll be healed from this COVID, I'll be healed from this cancer, by his stripes we are healed. And absolutely yes, God is able by his supernatural power to heal us from any disease according to his will. We must trust him in times of sickness that if he so chooses that he can heal us and we can see recovery. I remember one of the moments where I spoke to Brother Harold on the phone and he said, you know, I am trusting God and Sister Esling can, can testify. I am trusting God for my healing. But even if I am not healed, I am trusting him for my eternal salvation. So while God can absolutely supernaturally heal, what he will do in every single instance when we have faith on him is heal us from sin. The virus, the disease of sin is worse than any disease that we could ever be infected with. Because that disease does not eat out our flesh or cause us to have congestions or heart issues or anything of that sort that disease has corrupted our spirits and because our spirits are corrupted we are separated from God what Christ has done through his death and resurrection is to reconcile us to God so that we would not only live in this life but in eternity why on earth am I talking about this at Harold Allen's funeral service? So that we may know, while his body remains, his spirit is with the Lord. And this promise was not just for him, but for everyone who would trust in the Lord. And there is no greater comfort than knowing that we are safe with him so with every head bowed and every eye closed we're going to pray for the family in a moment 
But I'm asking if this could be a moment of individual reflection. Don't study the person in front of you or behind you to your left or your right. Don't study your neighbor who should have been here. You wish they heard this sermon. Study you. Where are you with the Lord today? The reality of life is that we have no control over when our time will come. We can hope that we will live to see tomorrow, but we might not even see the next second. And even if God, by His mercy, allows us to live another 50, 100 years, there will still be a moment where we pass from this life. And as Hebrews 9, 27 says, there's appointed unto man wants to die, and then the judgment. Wherever you are in this building, wherever you are as you watch this live stream, what is your relationship with the Lord today? Do you sense that he is calling you? Do you sense that he has been speaking to you? Do you have a sense that he is ever present and he requires you to do something to be saved? If that is you this morning, he says by his word that he is faithful and just to forgive us of every unrighteous act. Don't tell yourself, no, nah, what I did, he would never forgive that. He is not surprised by our iniquity. He requires us to confess it and trust in his son so if this is you today he says whoever would trust in his son Jesus Christ who shed his blood for our sin we must repent we are part of a perverse generation and the Lord calls us to repent and therefore our repentance is a requirement of our salvation so this morning if you would repent before the Lord, if you would place your faith in Christ Jesus to save you from your sin, to purge you from the curse of sin, I'm going to ask you in this moment to raise your hand so we can pray with you. It is not to embarrass you. I see that hand. It is so that we can pray with you. Whoever you are, I see those hands. I see those hands. Every individual who is raising their hands this morning, I want you in your place in this moment to call on God for yourself as I pray for you and with you. Mighty God, you see these hands which are raised in this moment. You see these hands indicating an, an acknowledgement of the fact that we, they are sinners. And your requirement of the sinner is to repent of sin. To acknowledge the fact that we are far away from you. That we are opposed to your word and your way. That we walk in unrighteousness. And only Christ Jesus can save us. We believe that he is the son of God. That he shed his blood for our sin. That he was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day showing the fact that he had conquered death and the grave and today through his shed blood that final enemy has been conquered for us as well so father i pray for every individual lord whether in this room or whether watching on live stream at this moment or watching in the future I ask you, O oh God, as you save them from their sin, as you wash them clean, O oh God, of the curse of sin, as you make them new creatures in you, that as you give them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that, that they would have that inner confidence in you that they are saved. 
Father, I pray, O oh God, that this will be a new day for every person who has stretched out in submission and surrender to you. I pray, God, that today, O oh God, will be a, a day of recommitment for those who walked with you before but may have fallen along the way. I pray today, O oh God, that they would grow in you as they find themselves submitted to church leadership in the Bible-believing church, Lord, being discipled to know your ways and to be a witness for you. So Lord, we give you all praise and we give you all thanks for this is your harvest of souls. Not the work of man, but the work of you, the work of God by your spirit as you call men to yourself. So we give you all praise. We give you all thanks for what you have done and what you will do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, we are going to ask the family to stand. I mean, I'm going to ask Elder Roderick to come to pray for the comfort and peace and strength of the family during this time of mourning. Can the family please stand? Shall we pray? Our Father and God, you see those who are standing this morning and those who might not even be able to stand. You see those who might be watching online, but more importantly, oh God, you know the hurt that they are feeling. God, you feel the pain that no one can see. Lord, they might smile, they might show, oh God, outwardly that things are all right, but God, you alone know what they are going through at this time. But you have promised, Father God, that you will comfort those who mourn. You have promised that your peace, God, that passes all understanding, the peace that the world cannot give, that you will give that peace to those who mourn. And so we lift them to you this morning, God, and we ask that you will be their comfort. You will be their strength. Lord, you will undergird them, God. You will give them all that they need as they go through this time of grief. May they not grieve like those without hope. But even as they have heard your word, God, I pray this morning that that word will take root in their hearts. And God, that they will be encouraged to look to you, the only one who can heal, truly heal, the only one who can give them the peace that they are looking for, that they will surrender all to you, God, and they will allow you to work things out according to your plans for their lives. We ask, oh God, that every need will be met according to your plans. You have already provided. And so, God, may they look to you this morning with that confidence, that assurance that whatever you do is well done. Whatever you allow, you have a plan. And even as you have seen it fit to take back their loved one, oh God, we thank you this morning for the life that you have lent, for the examples that he would have left, the legacy that they can carry on, God, and as he has walked in your way, that they too can be assured that if they commit their lives to you, that they will have eternal life in glory. And so, God, as they go through the days, the weeks, the months, the years ahead, we ask that you will be their constant companion, that in every situation they will look to you, whether, oh God, it be grief of some relative whether it be some troubling situation that they will know that you are the one who is able and more than able to carry them through and even if it is your will to keep them in those situations as you work out your plans and your purposes for them and so god we give them into your hands this morning and we ask that you will continue to guide and to direct them through each day through each situation that they will face and we will continue to give you thanks and praise for all that you are going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the final hymn in this segment of the service. And can it be? I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Died he 
for me who caused this pain for me who came to death pursued amazing love how can it be that thou my God just died for me amazing love how can it be that thou, my God, shalt die for me? He left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, empty himself of all but love. A bed for our unselfless race. His mercy all immense and free before all my God is found out me. His mercy all immense and free.
and trust when the ocean rise and what there's war I will swim with you above the storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still and know you are God when the oceans rise and waters roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are Be still. that I am God. Know His power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and the waters roar, I will soar with you
Do you want to open it in person? Do you want to open it in person? Shall we pray? Lord, we have come to the end of our journey with Harold. And even as we would commit his body to the ground, God, we commend his spirit to you. We thank you for the life that you have lent to us. God, and even in our grief and our times of sorrow, we give you thanks for all that you have done, all that you did through him, all that you have done for us. And so this morning, God, we ask that you will continue to guide and direct, that you will comfort and encourage those who are mourning his loss. We thank you, O oh God, that they can look to you with that assurance. And they can say, even in their time of sorrow, it is well with my soul. And so, Lord, as we commit his body to the ground, God, we want to just offer of our sacrifice of praise to you. And thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. And as they go through the times ahead, may they continue, Lord, to make you their source of help, their source of strength. And so we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of our dearly departed Harold Grant Lee Aline, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first.
Shall we sing the first hymn through all the scene, the changing scenes of life?
Republic Bank Broad Street. Republic Broad Street. I can reach that bar. Oh, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, we're on the hands and family. Uh huh. We're on the way here. Mine's going to start with Jordan Supermarket. Jordan Supermarket. Jordan Supermarket. Family members of the family. That big thing, so dollar for a little piggy for shit. That thing, so dollar for one man, my dollar for shit, I'm sorry. Shall we pray? Father and God, we thank you for the life of Harold. Lord, we thank you for the grace that you showed towards him the mercy you express. And we ask you, O oh God, to comfort those of us who remain. We ask you, O oh God, over the next days, weeks, months, and years, that you will guide us in all things, and we will receive your truth. So we give you all praise, and we give you all thanks for what you have done and what you shall do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good afternoon. On behalf of the